Church on the Rise would like to welcome you to the Ministry of the Word. We pray that it will help you find the will of God more clearly in your life. We dream, we vision, we focus. Otherwise, you just drift through life. You know, some people's lives are like this. They're like an archery person that takes the bow and arrow and they fire the arrow and then they go and paint a bullseye around the arrow. And, you know, life needs to be far more focused than that. God wants you to go in a certain direction this year. God wants to build your life with purpose and meaning and influence. And so living our dreams, dreaming not drifting, is so important. We've taken the life of Gideon, and for those who haven't been here you know, Gideon was, was a guy and our first message was really about see the dream. And seeing the dream was about hope, having hope. You can't live without hope and hope is all about a preferred future. It's all about seeing the future and living the future in God. Everything starts with hope. And so the question was, what do you see for this year? What do you see in your life? What do you believe God is saying to you uh, for your life uh, this year? All Gideon could see was problems and weakness in his own life. And there were three things we mentioned that day. All he could see, well, he couldn't see past his past. He said, look, there's no miracles, nothing's happened, nothing's going on. He couldn't see past his past. He couldn't see that God was for him. He said, God, you've abandoned us. And so he had a wrong understanding of God. And he couldn't see that God could use him to make a difference. Oh, well, our our clan is the smallest and I'm the youngest. And so we looked at that on that morning. But then God began to speak to him and said, Gideon, I'm with you. I am with you. Everybody say, God is with me. And that's the truth. God is with you. We sang that song this morning. He's never failed us. God is with you. And so three times God comes to Gideon. Even when Gideon was answering back to God, God kept on saying, no, Gideon, I'm with you. You mighty man of valor. You're going to do this. You're going to take out those Midianites. And what was happening when the harvest time would come, the enemy would come down and take all their harvest, all their, you know, their, their donkeys and sheep and they'd take everything, they'd rip them off. They were just being ripped off year after year after year. This was going on for seven years and the people cried out to God and God came to Gideon and said, you're the man, you're the man to do this. You're the man to give victory uh, to your nation. And so after God had spoken to him the three times, Finally, Gideon gets a bit of hope and he said, well, if I found favor with you, God, just just stay here and let me put a sacrifice together. And so he began to see and that's what hope does. Hope is like that seed and you've got to have seed in your life. And as that seed then is watered, it comes to pass. And so see the dream was hope. And then last week we spoke on speak the dream. It's not enough just to have hope. You've got to go from hope to faith. I mentioned last week, you know, it's, it's one thing to go window shopping. It's another thing to buy. Hope is window shopping. Faith is I'm going in to buy that. And so we've got to take our hopes and move into faith which is challenging. You know, to, to actually move into faith, you actually have to have God moments. There got to be little moments in God where God comes and says, ah, and a deposit of faith. It's a gift of faith. It drops into your spirit where you can begin to say, you know what? That's mine. That new job is mine. That business is mine. That soul, that family member is mine. Whatever it is that God is saying to you, faith begins to arise. And remember we talked about being pregnant. And so it's, it's like a woman being pregnant. Long before you see the bump, she knows she's got that little baby inside. And so within all of us, when faith is, is, uh, is, is connected to our spirit, 
then we know that uh, we're going to give birth to something. And so faith begins uh, to rise and, it, and it's not a formula. It's actually a journey. It's a mystery, but it comes out of relationship prayer. And so I'm really encouraging people this year to have daily devotions. In fact, I have got a little gift here for four people. So this is what I use. I use a little, just a, you know, an exercise book like this. I read a chapter and write down one thought. Who's going to have devotions this year and would like a little book? Don't put up. Thank you, sir. Here. That's Lanice. She's got a cackle like a chook. <laughs> She'll lay an egg in a minute. There we go. I'm only doing that just so you you can get going with your devotions. And I've encouraged, you know, it's not enough just to have someone else's devotion. I'm, I'm saying get hold of Rick Warren's and I'm going to keep uh, doing that, you know, he's almost got a million people every day that read his email. And, you know, he'll send you a few other emails, whatever, and they all ask you to give and get behind this. But, you know, just get his, his email or get somebody's. If you don't like Rick's, get somebody's. I'm, I'm encouraging you to get Rick's because I'm a smart pastor. I will tell you this, to help build our church. If, if a prominent pastor was down the road here and he had a devotion, I wouldn't encourage you to get his devotion because you will get emotionally and spiritually connected to that person. And so if Brian Houston was running Hillsong just down the road... I wouldn't be saying, get Brian's devotion. Well, pastor, you're insecure. No, I'm not insecure. I'm just being smart. Trust me. Trust me. I know how it works. And so you will get connected to the people that feed into your life. And so, you know, you, you, you get connected to the voice. Rick has a great voice. And as I've said, a million people around the world Get his devotion. He's a great teacher. And so get connected to someone out there that uh, can help you. But also at least read a chapter a day. Everybody say, a chapter a day keeps the devil away. You've you got a whole lot of thoughts coming into your brain every day. But let's get the word of God. If we can get the word of God into us, hello, you know, it's going to change our lives. And you're going to be spiritually anorexic if you only get one meal a week. Hello. Some of you are looking a bit skinny in spirit. We want to fatten you up. So, you know, it, it takes personal devotions and that, that will help that. And so going from hope to faith is, is, uh, is important. But uh, so... The birthing, and then we've got our little egg here. I've been trying to illustrate it. Next slide. Is it the next slide there, I think? Uh, no. Yeah, give me the... So the egg is like hope. Then faith is that incubation stage where, you know, you just are on, on your, your faith and it's, it's, it's growing stronger and stronger. But then... That little chicken's inside of that egg and it's grown and it has to break through in that faith and take that step of faith. And so today we're going to action our faith and uh, uh, the title of the message is Live Your Dream. Live Your Dream. Everybody say, Live Your Dream. So let's start off here. Uh, today in Judges 6.25, thanks for that verse there, Jared, and it says, 
That night the Lord said to Gideon, Take the second bull from your father's herd and the one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole standing beside it. Then build an altar to the Lord your God. So what God was saying to Gideon is, I want you to go into the middle of town and pull down the Baals that are there and build an altar and declare, hey, God's in town. God's in town. You know, Gideon, he, he wasn't the strongest in his faith at this point, so he snuck out at night and he did it, but he did it. He started somewhere. And, you know, when you're actioning your faith, what you'll find is to action your faith is start small and work up big. You know, if you want to be in ministry and if you want to, you know, if God's called you to preach, say, uh, one day, well, don't, don't try and start behind the pulpit the first day. Start in the Sunday school room. Start small. You know, David killed a lion and a bear long before he killed Goliath. And so the, the disciples said, increase our faith. And so faith is something like a muscle. You actually make it work and, and it grows stronger and stronger. You know, for me as a young man, I felt God call me into the ministry, you know, around I was 17, 18 years of age. And I felt God starting to tap me on the shoulder. And so they needed somebody to help in Sunday school. And so I thought, well, that's a good place to start. I've actually got a, a, a photo up here this morning of uh, me on, this is what I used to do on Saturday nights. You ready? Yeah. Just go back, back one. So that, that was me, well, <laughs> it was so e exciting here. That was my Sunday school lesson there that I, was, that I was getting ready. And, you know, 17, 18 years of age, that's how it started. God is going to challenge you this year to get going with something. And so it might only be small. It might, you know, for me to teach Sunday school was actually quite big at the time anyway. But, you know, I started somewhere there. I put the next photo up because I'd actually go and pick up all the kids too. And, you know, it was in the days. Just put my hot car up there. I like to see my old car. But, you know... Um, do you like uh, somebody, you'd look back and say, was he Italian or something? You know, with the, <laughs> the floral over the windscreen. But uh, I used to pile about 13 kids in this car. It was a day you didn't have seatbelts. Life was fun in the old days. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not appropriate to say it these days, but um, we, we used to go down and we used to call it Vegemite Village, actually, because... A lot of the Aboriginal children would be in that area. I'd go down there into Vegemite Village and I'd pick up all these kids out of Vegemite Village. Thirteen kids would all pile in the car and uh, I'd take them down to, to uh, Sunday school, bring them home, you know. And it was just, it was a totally different day than today. But you know what, it was a whole lot of fun. And when you start with God, start doing something, the adventure begins. And so start small. God gave him a small assignment. If you won't start on your small assignment, you'll never get a big assignment. It could be your first missions trip. It could be, you know, coming up to Pastor Mike and say, look, is there anything I can do to help with youth? You know, I said to somebody the other day, I said, you know what? People don't volunteer anymore. Hello? I don't know why. You might be able to tell me. But you know, when I first started ministry years ago, people would walk up to me and they'd say, Pastor Rod, is there anything I can do in the house? Anything I can help with? Today, people wait. Whether they're just being polite, I don't know. But you know, if you feel something in your spirit, can I say to you, start knocking on that door. Start picking up that phone. Start chipping away at that egg so you can get through and get out and become all that God intended you to be. And so Gideon here starts off. 
And uh, later on, God calls him to take on an army of around about 135,000, that was the enemy, with 300 men, 300 against 135,000. Can you believe that? And yet he had the faith to do that, and they won a great victory. And uh, in... uh, in uh, Judges 8, 28 there it says, So Midian was subdued before the sons of Israel, and they did not lift up their heads any more, and the land was undisturbed for 40 years in the days of Gideon. So Gideon had a great victory. And you know, for a whole generation, Israel was free from the Midianites. You'll be amazed what can happen when you start stepping out in faith and actioning your faith. Faith requires action. The chicken has to start working on the shell at some point unless it will die in the shell. Somewhere you got to action that faith, otherwise that dream will die. Hope looks at the mountain and says, I will conquer you one day. Faith takes the first step. And so actioning our faith is so important. Jesus said to the man, take up your bed and walk. Hope says it's coming. Faith says it's here. Hope makes plans. Faith takes action. There's a little saying that a preacher that I knew, he used to say this. Have a go, you mug. You never know. You just might win. Have a go, you mug. You never know. You just might win. And I declare over all of us today, there is more. (laughs) Have a go. I declare there is more inside of you. There is more inside of you. Everybody say, there's more inside of me. There's more inside of me. There's more, there's more. God has more inside of you. And as we begin to take steps of faith and believe God and action that, then it will come out. You know, I've got a photo up there of a tortoise. And the thing about the tortoise is the tortoise only moves forward when he sticks his neck out. You've got to put your head out. You've got to stick your neck out a little bit and, and action that faith. Can you imagine... You know, Jesus is there walking on the water and he says to Peter, come on, Peter, you come too. Can you imagine that first step? He sort of, I wonder if he faltered a little, I don't know, but he's get, you know, he he would have got his foot over the bow and think, I hope this works, Jesus. You know, to to think about walking on water is an incredible thing, but you got to take that first step. You got to be believe and begin to move towards the dream I find that I got to go and get most things in life few things come to me I got to go and get it you know I had to go and find my wife if I had a sat home You know, at 18 years of age and thought, yeah, well, God, you know the way for me. You send her to me. Guess what? I'd be an old spinster today. An old spinster. Bachelor. Oh, the lady's the spinster. See why I need a wife? She'd be the old spinster. (laughs) She would have married somebody else too. She's smart enough to do that. But, you know, you've got to go and get life. Does anybody else find life that way? You just sit around all day. It's not going to come to you, honey. I'm sorry. You've got to go get life. You've got to get out there and make it happen. You know, some, sometimes I say in life, there's things that you make happen. There's other things you let happen. But in, in both ways, faith is active. You're doing something. And uh, so in, in God, God wants us to stir our lives, stir our heart. And so when you're believing for something, you know, Abraham and Sarah, Abraham's in his 90s, mate. He's, he's, he's 99. Hello? 
We're all adults here mostly, I think, but for him to have the baby, he had to do something. Hello? God said, you're going to have, you're going to be a father. But if he hadn't have done anything with Sarah, he would have been saying, Sarah, it's bedtime. Let's go make a baby. At 99. You know, that's frightening, isn't it, really? (laughs) But my point is, my point is, if life's going to happen for you, you've got to get out there and make it happen. It's not going to come to you. You've got to do something about it. You've got to action that faith. You've got to action it. I was inspired by a man called Cliff Young. Who remembers Cliff Young? Who doesn't remember Cliff Young? You're all under 30. Let's put his picture up there. This is Cliff Young. Everybody say, good day, Cliff. In 1983, 34 years ago, this man inspired our nation. In fact, they've made a movie on him. He was 61 years of age. He was my age. I hadn't actually connected that before. <laughs> but at my age, at my age, this guy, he's, he's an old dairy farmer, and he says, you know what, I'm going to run a marathon. And he actually believed he could win. So he, he, he starts training, and a marathon was 875 kilometres from Sydney to Melbourne. He used to train in his gumboots and round up the sheep and cattle. He actually had a shuffle. He wouldn't jog or run, he'd shuffle. And that's why everybody laughed at him because he shuffled along. The way he ran, he'd shuffle. And so, um, <laughs> keep quiet, <Anise. laughs> and So, And so, I... You know, when they interviewed him, and I, I remember it, you know, I thought, this guy, he's, you know, he's crazy. But, oh, I love, I love his, you know, passion and have a go, mate. You never know. You just might win. You never know. You just might win. And so he said, oh, I'm going to run my own race. Cliff was at the back of the pack when they first started off. And uh, he said to the... Uh, you know, interviewers, TV interviewers, he said, I'm going to run all night. And so he actually changed the whole game. And uh, while all the other guys were sleeping for a few hours, he ran right through the night, got in front of the pack and stayed actually in front of the whole lot. And he actually broke the record by two days. That was It was a remarkable, absolutely remarkable run. And the amazing thing was that they began to study his shuffle and they found that his shuffle actually used less energy than the other guys who were running. And now they call it the the Cliff Young shuffle and marathon runners use his shuffle. Here he is, 61 years of age. He has, you know, the guy's not a Christian, but you know what? He had a natural faith that he actually actioned and pulled off his dream. And it's the same principle in in the spirit, that God puts faith within our hearts and our lives. And as we action it, as we get out there against all odds, you'll be amazed what faith can do. And the Bible is just a Bible full of faith. And miracles happen when people step out in faith. You know, just let me just uh, give you just a couple of illustrations before we close. Because today, before we finish the service... I would just love to have our team today pray for everyone in the building that this year we will see the purposes of God in our life come to pass. Let us not drift this year. You know, I I say it and I've said at the beginning of the year, this could be the last year on planet Earth. This could be the last year that we are here. If you knew that this was the last year that we were living, how would you live this year? And that's what we need to do because every year has purpose in God. 
You know, 18 months ago, and, and many of you would know who's been on the journey with us as a church, 18 months ago, we had a financial crisis in this church where a, a property that had been bought, we didn't have tenants in it, and uh, we, we needed desperately a tenant. We tried to sell it, the, the sale fell over, and it was, it was a real crisis. You know, I'd, we'd run out of money, we'd run out of everything. E energy, and, and, you know, we were just devastated really but I'd been driving up Latcham Drive over over a number of months and I used to look and I'd see this guy there with his trucks and there was a lot of trucks in this little yard and I had a prompting to say why don't you go and knock on his door and ask him does he want a larger premise because we were trying to sell the place at the time I, I didn't do that but when the sale dropped through, I again felt that prompting. Go and knock on the door. I'd never done that in all my life. You know, you don't, well, some people might, but, you know, just go and knock on people's doors and say, hey, mate, do you, do you want a bigger yard for your business? But that's the only place that I felt to do that. I didn't feel to go all around Caloundra and do it, even though we were in desperate, just that yard. So I did. And his wife was there and said, oh, well, you know, I'll tell my husband. You know, happy day. About two days later, I get a call. Uh, hello. You called in. And the long and the short of it is, you know, he moved into the property and he's our biggest tenant today. Why? How did that happen? It happened because, you know, you believe and you have faith and it's a prompting of the spirit. Go knock on that door. Go ring up that person. Go apply for that job. You know, you've got to get out there and have a go. When Israel wanted to take Canaan, God said, go search out the land. You've got to get around what you believe is yours. Hang around the thing that you believe is yours in God and you'll find that you'll hear the Holy Spirit saying to you, come on, do this, do that, start chipping away. And you know what? It's amazing when we action our faith. It's a bit scary sometimes. That's why you've got to work up to it. But in God, we can see wonderful miracles happening if we do that. When Moses took the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. And the Bible actually says that Moses was there crying out to God, saying, God! help and God came down and said to Moses what are you doing mate use your rod he was praying and asking God when he himself should have been out there actioning faith there's a time to pray and there's a time to move there's a time to action and that's not always easy to discern so Moses picks up his rod, touches the Red Sea, and it opens up. An amazing, amazing miracle. God help us to take what's in our hand and start actioning the thing that God has put in our hand. Amen? And so whatever that might be this year, my prayer is that as a church, we won't just go window shopping. We'll begin to go in and say, you know what, that's mine. And I'm buying it in Jesus' name. It's mine. Faith says it's mine. And then we take those opportunities and those actions in Jesus' name. And so today, you know, just I pray that this, this series helps you see your dreams come true. So you've got to see it. What do you see? What do you see? Can I just have a pianist there? What, what are you seeing for this year? Just close your eyes right now. Just in your own spirit. Maybe you haven't got anything yet. Maybe you have. What do you see? Thank you, Lord. Come on, just let the Holy Spirit even drop right now. Just something in your spirit. Or even just confirm what you have been thinking. The 
Go on, let hope rise. Let hope rise in your heart. Let God place some seed in your spirit. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I just want to sing. I just want to sing for you. That's all I want to do is just sing. God, I want to preach for you. God, I just want to be a good dad, good mum. I want to be a good husband this year. I want to be the best husband that I have been for many years. Lord, this year I want to get my life and work balance right. Lord, this year we're believing for a new house, a new car. We're going to do that trip. We're going to have that holiday that we've thought about for a long time. I'm going to get that new job this year. I'm going for that promotion. This year I'm going to see my family come to Christ. This year I'm going to see my boy come home, my girl. This year we're going to see some restoration in our broken family. We don't talk anymore. But this year I'm believing this is the year. We trust you've enjoyed the ministry of the Word. And if you'd like more details or how to contact our church and its resources, look at our website www.churchontherise.org.au.